Hello whittlers and carvers and thank you once again for joining me here at The Joy of Carving. In this video I want to take you through how you can sharpen and maintain your whittling knives. The ability to sharpen and maintain your whittling knives is a fundamental skill that you really need to put some time into developing. Now there's numerous techniques that you can utilize to sharpen your knives. There's no particular wrong way of doing it. I've always thought that if the end result is that you have a sharp knife, then it's not a wrong way of sharpening. But this is my method and my technique of sharpening, which hopefully will be really useful for you. I'm going to show you how to sharpen three different knives. So I have a larger knife, which is used for things like spoon carving. And then I have two smaller detail knives, which both have problems on them, they have issues with the blades which I'm going to explain and show you how to fix them in case the same thing happens to you. The first problem is the tip of this knife has broken off, which is a common thing that can happen for any whistler. The tip of the blade is the thinnest part and this happens, this snaps off when you're applying too much pressure, too much leverage to that point. The second issue is that there's a very small nick in the edge of this knife. So there's a really small piece which doesn't show very well on camera. And this can happen again like the other knife because there's too much leverage on the edge of the blade. Or it can simply happen because you've dropped the knife on a hard surface which can dent the edge of the knife. So to fix the first problem, we need to grind the back edge of the knife back into a point. And I'm using a sanding station here to do that. Very, very gently, this is a low grit sandpaper because we don't want to take off too much of the blade at once. If you're grinding the blade using this method, just remember to wear goggles because you may get a few sparks flying at you. If you don't have a sanding station, it's not a problem. I'm going to quickly run through a couple of other techniques that you can utilize in order to put the point back in your blade. And the point is back in the blade there. You can see that's been nicely fixed. Now the other techniques you can use are you can get hold of various different grits of sandpaper then you can use the sandpaper to just gently grind away at the back of that blade. You may want to just cover the blade, put a sheath on it because that blade is facing upwards at you. So just be cautious when you do this technique. The second method is to use files. So you'll want to use a slightly bigger file than this. This is just a needle file, but you'll securely fasten the knife in a vise and just grind away at the back of the blade. So these methods are exactly the same as the sanding station. The only benefit to having that machine is that it speeds up the process. Now the second problem that we had with that blade, because the nick was so small, just the process of sharpening the blade will wear enough of the blade away to get rid of that small nick. Now if that was larger, we would need to grind down the front of that blade. And we need to grind it down so that nick was no longer visible, so you're grinding it back to the deepest point, and you can just about see the nick on the video there. This is something that may not seem like an issue as you're carving because the knife is still technically going to cut but what it will actually start to do is just start to tear the wood and if you don't correct this soon eventually there's a chance that that small nick can fracture and turn into a much larger one because you've weakened the knife edge there's a, a sort of point at it that's far weaker that's vulnerable so you can turn that small nick into a much larger one if you don't correct it early. And now we're finally onto the sharpening stage. So I've got a scrap piece of leather here that I'm just using to cover my desk with. Now I'm going to apologize in advance for the state of the box that I keep my whetstones in. I've had this disgusting old ice cream tub now for about five years and it's just where I keep my whetstones. So I do apologize for its uh, yucky mess. These are double-sided Japanese whetstones and I'm not going to lie to you, these can get very pricey. They can get really expensive. For those beginner whittlers and carvers watching, you don't need to go out and buy all of these whetstones. You could get one medium grit whetstone. Alternatively, you could do all of the sharpening with sandpaper, just various different grits of sandpaper, which is a much cheaper option. Those numbers on the whetstones refer to the grit. So the rule of thumb is the lower the number, the rougher the stone is going to be. The lower the grit, the higher the number, then the finer the stone is going to be. So you're going to start off with a low number, uh, a low grit, something that's rough, and then you're going to work your way up the numbers to a polishing stone. So I'm going to finish on an 8,000 grit. And you can see why I've held onto this ice cream tub for so long, because the whetstone just fits perfectly in the lid. And then I have a spray bottle just to keep the whetstone wet. And the final piece of kit that I have is this flattening stone. And this is used to keep the whetstone level. 
over time, as you use the stones more and more, they'll start to become uneven, unlevel, they'll start to have sort of dips and dents in them. And this is used to just maintain the stones and keep them good and flat. Okay, let's begin. The first thing that you need to do is you need to find what's called the bevel of the knife edge. If you're a complete novice, the bevel just refers to the angle of the blade. The best way to find the angle is to lie the knife flat against the stone and you're just going to gently twist it like I am there until you find the correct angle that the knife is at. So the method that I use is I apply force or pressure on the pulling stroke like I am there and then I apply no pressure on the push-up but it is still sharpening on the push-up it's just a much lighter stroke. From there, it's just a case of repeating the process on the other side. I tend to do about five or 10 strokes on one side before I reverse and do the other side. When I swap sides, I also reverse the pressure that I'm applying as well. So the pressure is applied on that push stroke and then there's very little to no pressure applied on the pulling stroke. This method of applying pressure when you switch those sides, I think creates a more consistent sharpening process rather than us just constantly applying pressure to the blade. It helps us keep that angle as well. And the angle is really key here. We need to constantly keep that angle that we've we created by finding that beveled edge. Now, I won't lie to you. Learning how to sharpen your knives like this is a challenge. Learning how to maintain and sharpen your knives is a challenge, regardless of which method that you're using. But you must persevere with it because it really pays off in the long run. So persevere with it and keep practicing. Then what I do as I go along is I just keep testing the sharpness of the blade on a piece of paper. So use the full length of the blade just to test how sharp it's getting. We're going to use the exact same method for this knife because it's small, but the angle is slightly sharper on this one. That beveled angle is slightly sharper. So again, just find your angle and hold your wrist steady at that angle while you sharpen. Exactly the same method as we used before. For those beginner whittlers and carvers out there who have never sharpened any knife before, one of the things I recommend you do is buy a cheap practice knife to work on, just to practice on, because this will take some time to master. And if you've gone out and bought yourself a really expensive, nice whittling knife, the last thing you want to do is keep messing it up by changing that beveled angle as you sharpen. For the larger carving knife, I want to show you two methods. The first one that I'm demonstrating here is the easiest out of the two. And you can see I've found that beveled angle again and I'm just dragging the whole knife across the whole of the stone. I'm utilizing the full length of the stone and I'm not going back and forth. It's just one stroke against the whole of the stone. This is a far easier method, especially for a beginner who's never sharpened anything before, because it's less pressure on our wrist to keep that angle. This next method, it does sharpen the knife quicker. However, it requires a bit more dexterity um, with sharpening because you're moving the knife back and forth up and down and then you're also dragging it as well you're dragging it across the stone so it's a little bit more challenging because you're having to keep that angle constant but from my experience this is a better method for sharpening out of the two I'm not going to show you the sharpening process for every single stone because it's exactly the same it's just the grit that's changing so it's going from a rough stone to a smoother stone we're going from sharpening to polishing I do want to take you through the last stage of polishing, which is called stropping. There are various different kits that you can purchase online, but all you really need is that polishing compound, which looks like a chunk of wax and some scrap leather. And from there, you're just rubbing the knife against that leather to polish the very edge of the blade. I just wanted to take a second to explain why we do this. I'm going to draw a little diagram and if we pretend that this is the knife edge and this is the back of the knife, 
Even after sharpening, if we looked at the very edge of the blade under a microscope, it would be really jagged, even along that point that we've sharpened. So even after all of the different polishing stone that we used, it would still have all of these microscopic little scratches and jagged edges. And the purpose of the stropping phase is to remove all of those to a, a razor-like finish. In fact, that stropping phase is so good that during carving you can actually just keep stropping your blade and it will help maintain a sharper edge for longer. And there's the finished knives all polished and sharpened. I hope this video has been really useful for you. I think sharpening and maintaining your whittling knives can be an intimidating task for a beginner but it's just a case of practice and repetition and eventually it's just another thing for you to master. Thank you so much for joining me here again at The Joy of Carving, and as always, happy carvings!